Uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to our meeting for April 14th. We'll start with the pledge by Councilman Blake. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Start with the uh, roll call, please, Brenda. Councilman Blaisdell. Present. Councilwoman Carter. Present. Councilman Crawley. Present. Councilman Isaacson. Present. Supervisors a lot. Present. Yes. Close enough. Sorry. It's, it's been mangled worse than that, trust me. Uh, motion to accept the minutes of the February 24th. Bart, can you turn your mic off? Sure. Thank you. I think that will stop that. The 24th mm, minutes, please. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Any discussion? Councilman Blaisdell. Yes. Councilwoman Carter. Yes. Councilman Crawlish. Yes. Councilman Isaacson. Yes. Supervisor Zalatnik. Yes. Oh, I skipped over public comment. We'll start with our opening public comment session if anybody would like to speak. <coughs> See any hands raised on the screen? So, anybody from the floor? Okay, seeing none, we'll close the public comment section. Move on to resolution 25. Resolution 25 a resolution to enter into an electrical supply agreement to provide electrical services to the town. Now, therefore, be it resolved. The town board does hereby authorize, agree, consent to, and ratify, allowing the supervisor entering, entering into an agreement to provide electricity services to town hall and town buildings at a rate less than or equal to a maximum estimated rate per kilowatt of 0 0.06535 for the pricing available on Thursday, April 15th, and further authorizes the town supervisor to sign and enter into the agreement and execute all necessary documents and pay all amounts required. Now, therefore, be resolved by the town and building board. Uh, just for the public, the reason we don't have a set rate is because the rates change daily. And if we were to make a motion tonight to accept the rate at 0 0.059, tomorrow's rate might be 0 0.60. So the, the, I'm kind of hoping, anyway, that the board and the controller, we've set up a number not to, that will not to go over. As of today, our rates were lower than that than that cap. Um, today's rates were American Gas and Power had 0 0.05, Constellation had 0 0.06, so there are uh, substantial savings to be held or to be gained um, by doing this. Our contract is up at the end of the week anyway. Um, so tomorrow, Dave, we'll look up what the rates are, and I will let everybody know what the rate is when we sign the contract. Just a quick question. When I see American Power and Gas, are they not quoting 18 months, 24, 30 months, and 36 months? My phone job. No, they don't. They don't. They won't let you lock up that long. So we're with them. We'd only be locking up one year. That's correct. It's a savings of about three thousand dollars. I know it's not a ton of money, but it's a savings nonetheless.
Well, our last contract was for three years or two years? Two. I believe it was for two. And John, the rates might be different tomorrow. If, if the two-year rate makes sense, I'll give everybody a quick call, a quick text, and, and see what you want to do. Well, once you, after tomorrow, that'll be live. Right, but, but we'll have tomorrow's rates. I can call everybody tomorrow morning and let you know what the rates are and, and, and see what you want to do. I guess I'll make a motion. Thank you, John. To go with Constellation New Energy for 30 months, that seems to be, there's some reason that that seems to be a low number because it's lower than 24 and lower than 36. It looks like 30 months would be the most economic for you. Well, the one-year rate for American Power and Gas would be is, is the lowest rate right now for a one-year term. I mean, if you want to lock in a longer term, we can do that, too. Well, I think... Go ahead. I, mean, I was just going to say, you're kind of taking a chance on uh, <clears throat> next year. I mean, you're kind of right. gambling with it, so... Whatever the board feels comfortable with. I, you know, I, I'm okay with whatever we... What did you say? Savings of about 3000 about three thousand dollars. Yes. I guess. <laughs> I am going to share. I guess my feeling is, Benny, that as volatile as the market is right now, I think locking in for thirty months is probably a good thing because come next year, we have absolutely no idea what could happen to the oil industry. Right. I think it'd be a good thing to lock in for 30 months right now. Okay, so you want me to check the 30-month rates tomorrow with these three companies and lock in with the lowest one? Yeah, I guess that's a, It appears that... Well, I mean, like... Blue Energy is the lowest one right now. Well, it, it, well right. Yeah, today they were, yes. But tomorrow, you know, I mean, Limit Rock is only 0 .0026 behind them. So if something changes tomorrow... And I'm comfortable with, you know, a 30-year, uh, 30 30-year, 30, I wish, 30-month term. Um, we'll just see tomorrow who has the lowest 30-month term, and, we'll, and I'll go with those guys. Okay. That's my motion. 30 months. 30-month 30 30, 30 term. Okay. I'll second. Any further discussion? So I, have a, I do have a question. So if this is how we approach it tomorrow, we can find out that those rates have exceeded 0 0.065. What happens with the current contract that we have? Do we automatically re-enroll in what we have today? Or will we have to have an emergency meeting to, to update the ask? Um, no, I, if, if, if their rate is higher tomorrow, then I will let everybody know. I'll send you this, I'll send you tomorrow's rates and we can do we have to have a meeting, Tim, or can we? I think you would have to have a meeting. All right. And I ask only because it seems we're being very specific on what we're voting for. And I'm not opposed to that by any means. I'm just curious what happens if, if the rates change well, I, drastically. I think uh, on the resolution, um, Dave has set a, a, a pretty high bar, you know, so there is some room to, to go up. And I don't think we'll get there. Between, between those two companies, I don't think we'll get there. Um, yeah, honestly, we never know what's going to happen overnight, but this is a problem that we ran into the last time we did this contract, if I remember correctly, because we have, you have the same, same issue. Can, um, Brenda, can you pull the board, please? Councilman right. Blaze. Yes. Councilwoman Kerr. Yes. Councilman Frolish. Yes. <laughs> Councilman Oxen. Yes. Supervisor Salah. Yes. Thank you very much. Resolution 26, awarding Mid-State Industries 
the change order for the town court ceiling finish work. <clears throat> now therefore be resolved the town board after due consideration and upon recommendation of the town engineer awards the change order to for the town court ceiling replacement project to Mid-State Industries Cattle and Street Schenectady for a total sum of $22,564, which amount includes installing new ceiling grids, insulation, and drywall soffits as set forth in the attached change order request, and hereby directs the supervisor to take whatever steps are necessary to execute an agreement between the town and mid-state industries for such improvements and repairs in any required change order documentation or inspection documentation which will be needed and necessary for the processing and completion of this change order. And to do all that is needed and required to pay all amounts under owed under the agreement. I'll make that motion. Thank you. <laughs> sure, go ahead, John. <coughs> Just so for everybody's information, this is all part of the rebuild now that Town Hall has a new roof um, and it has been mitigated of mold. This is part of the rebuild to go back to get first the court, which is our top priority. Uh, basically, we walked through with our facilities people, looked at projects that they were comfortable with and projects that they weren't comfortable with. And the change order is basically for the projects they're not comfortable doing. So Mid-State can come in and do this within the next couple of weeks. Correct, Jenny? So it'll get us further along to getting court back to where it needs to be. And this work was this work was originally included in the project. So it's not uh, we just we just wrote this out into a phase two um, back in January. Get a second? No. Awesome. I'll second. Okay. Any further discussion? Yeah, I, I have a silly question. Just a silly question. Why are we going with two by two ceiling tiles? Well, in the rest of the building were two by two. They were. They were. Yeah, downstairs, downstairs in the you assessment, the whole downstairs drawing. is two by twos. What about upstairs? That was all two by two. That was all two by two. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So we're just. Yeah. I, we well, want the, the grids aren't set up for two by two. Yeah, they are. Well, they will be downstairs. Up in the court and up. They upstairs were upstairs. Are gone. Upstairs are gone. I know what's going on. I know. So, they're well, they will be. Yeah. Okay. All right. Plus, it gives you, I think, a meter more modern look. All right. No, I'm just curious. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Can you pull the board, please, Brenda? All right. Councilor Blaisdell. Yes. Councilwoman Kerr. Yes. Councilman Prolish. Yes. Councilman Isaacson. Yes. Supervisor Zalatnik. Yes. Thank you. Uh, motion to set a public hearing for the town code changes requested by the town clerk of chapter 63 and 129. Brenda, you want to give us a All right. Um, so chapter 129 is peddling and soliciting. In part of the code, it states that you, you can get a license at any time, and then in this chapter of the code it says you have to get it by January 1st. So we're just changing it so that it, you can get your, your pedaling license at any time. It's only good until December 31st, and the amount does not change. If you get it January 1st or November 1st, you pay the same amount. Okay, um, That's what everybody else is doing as well. And then the other one is just <clears throat> it's on uh, licensing fees for the dogs, dog licensing. We're getting rid of purebred licensing. Um, we can't get the tags anymore. If you have it right now, you can keep it. But anybody new, we will give a discount for more dogs. But to anybody, because right now we have somebody who has purebred I don't know, two hours or something, and then has two other dogs, but they're all in the, under the same license. Um, we are also doing a late fee, and we looked at Malta's, and Malta does a 
unlicensed dogs. So when we find a dog that's not licensed, it's a $25 fee on top of a licensing fee. Um, so we pulled that from Malta. And those are just the, the code changes that we wanted to do. But because it's code, we have to go through the uh, public hearing process. And we have to give 10 days notice for a public hearing, right? Um, you can, I can get it in the paper. Yeah, so we could have it in we, for we our can next have meeting. Twentieth. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I need a motion to set a public hearing for the twenty eighth at uh, seven o five. Seven thirty five. Seven thirty five. Hold that, Mr. Hart. I'll make that motion. Thank you, Frank. Can I get a second? I'll second. Thank you, Ryan. Any discussion? Brendan, pull the board, please. Councilman Blaisdell. Yes. Councilwoman Kerr. Yes. Councilman Frolish. Yes. Councilman Isaacson. Yes. Supervisor Salat. Yes. Next up is a motion to hire summer employee Jimmy DePew, Stone Church Road, for part time work with the Buildings and Grounds Department at 12.50 an hour to start uh, April 13th, which was yesterday. Jimmy's uh, annual summer tradition here at the town of Milton. So, um, and I, I stopped by today and he was. Extremely happy to be, to be back to work. <laughs> Brenda and I have both gotten numerous phone calls from Jimmy, probably since we had that nice week in March when he was coming back to work. So I stopped by just to welcome Jimmy back, and he's happy to be here. So a motion to rehire Jimmy to I'll make that motion. Thanks, Frank. I'll second it. Thank you, John. Any discussion? Yes. Um, I'm curious, so he's listed here as $12.50 an hour, but further down in the agenda we're talking about seasonal health at $15 an hour. Is there a reason for the difference in pay? Yes, Jimmy's under a program. Okay. A special needs program. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, our seasonal health has always been brought in at minimum. Uh, they, they set the program actually. No, no, part of when we get down to seasonal. Yeah. So they've always come in at um, 15. No, minimum. Well, we'll worry about that when we get to that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, pull the board, please, Brenda. Okay. Councilman Blaisdell. Yes. Councilwoman Kerr. Yes. Councilman Crowley. Yes. Councilman Saxon. Yes. Supervisor Delight. Yes. Thank you, everyone. A uh, motion to hire Patricia Nealon, 35 Mechanic Street, Boston County, New York, as a part time clerk in the building department. At a rate of fifteen dollars an hour and no more than twenty hours per week, starting Monday, April nineteenth, twenty twenty-one. Uh, Frank and I conducted interviews last week with several applicants, along with Bill, and uh, Ms. Nealon was at the top of our list, and she's uh, ready to start on Monday. She will be handling the duties at uh, planning and zoning meetings, and she will be helping out you know, with getting packets ready for both of those boards as well as whatever's needed to take a little bit of load off the team. They're getting uh, pretty swamped and busy at the building department this time of year. So, need a motion. I'll make the motion. Thank you, Frank. I'll second. Thanks, Ryan. Any discussion? Is she going to be doing the meeting? Yes. How are we dealing with the stipend? Stipend is going away. Okay, thank you. Yep. Just a quick question. Do we have a resume or uh, job application? Yes. Usually we get those before. Uh, yeah, well, Frank and I, yes, I can, I'll give it to you. We only had three applicants, John. I know. Okay. I'd like to see what we're hiring. Okay. I'll get that to you tomorrow morning. Uh, Brenda, pull the board, please. Councilman Blaisdell. Yes. Councilman Carr. Yes. Councilman Frolish. I'm going to vote no. I don't have any information on this first. Councilman Isaacson. Yes. Supervisor Zalak. Yes. Next up is a motion to advertise for seasonal help as needed at a rate of Open for discussion. 
I'm also curious. I, I don't see it listed here. Is it full time or part time? Uh, it's it's seasonal, so it could be up to up to 40, 40 hours a week. This is for guys. This is for help with buildings and grounds, lawn cemeteries, painting pavilions, whatever needs to be done. So it's not a it's not a part time. So there'd be like no overtime. There won't be any overtime, no. It'll be no more than 40 hours a week. So basically, we want to advertise so we can pull from a list of resumes as we need to fill potential openings, or are we looking to hire a certain number of people? Uh, right now, Anthony has, has asked for three people. He thinks a crew of five and himself will be able to handle what's, what needs to be done this summer. If there's another project that comes up or you know, something more, then we may ask for somebody else. But they have a rather ambitious uh, schedule in front of them for, for the next few months. And uh, obviously, if it's raining, they're not going to be mowing, so the guys won't come in that day to, you know, to mow. There's, there's a, lot of, a lot of places a lot of cemeteries and parks that they have to keep up on. I think minimum wage is 13 20 Yeah. Yeah. Why did this, this change? Did, wasn't Jimmy at that minimum wage? Didn't he have to? No. Yeah, he was, but he doesn't because of the program he doesn't have to be. Okay, he was. So yes, he was. The original yes, he was, but the original because of the program agenda. he doesn't have okay. to. Okay. Thank you. Um I Normally, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, I thought these were usually the high school and college students that we bring in for the summer. Is that correct? Yes. We've always had three, three, maybe four, two or three, two, only two. Okay. Um, because I did ask Jason about it when he brought, when he hired them at, when he was in charge of it, and he said minimum wage. Okay. Then it'll be thirteen twenty, and we'll see who. Who wants to come in? Uh, like I said, Anthony has a rather ambitious schedule. There are, we all know that the pavilions need some work. Um, I'm just looking you know, at it caning and weed whacking and mowing. I think they can do it and let the guys go on to the more complex, you know, let them, so they'll have the time to do the, the work that needs the skills. Yeah, I don't have a problem with that. I do, I have a quick question. Where in the budget do we take for this? We're looking at 750 a week for three people, plus uh, insurance, not insurance, but uh, uh, FICA and stuff like that. It, it, it's work. also the retirement if they decide if they, yes, they can join if they choose to join, which is a smart thing for students because it eventually down the road, if, you know. But in, um, it's under. I don't remember budgeting for this. It's a, it, or it's under. Home. Yeah. I think it was a carryover from the year before, John. It was under where the camp counselors, the same account for the camp counselors were under, so the new programs. That's how we voted on it the last time we voted on this. <coughs> Brandy, can you call the board, please? Sure. Councilman Blaisdell. Yes. Councilwoman Kerr. Yes. Councilman Frolish. Yes. Councilman Isaacson. Yes. Supervisor Zalon. Yes. Next up. Did we have the first and second? We didn't have the first and second? We thought we did. I don't know if there wasn't. Okay. okay. So since we're not right. hiring at this point, just advertising. Right, it's just advertising. Okay. Sorry. Can I get a second to advertise for help? Oh, I'll, I'll second. Thank you. I think we've already pulled the board, so we're put there. No, we got pulled. Okay, <laughs> try it again. <laughs> Councilman Blaisdell. Yes. Councilwoman Kerr. Yes. Councilman Frolish. Yes. Councilman Isaacson. Yes. Supervisor Zalatna. Yes. Uh, next up is a discussion on the website upgrade proposals with the motion to send out for a proposed RFP. Uh, Brenda and I have spoken to a couple of companies that uh, do website work and we've got uh, some some feedback from them. And uh, Brenda, you want to help out? It started off real simple and it's not real simple anymore. Um, we have 
proposals ranging from $4,000 to $32,000. Um, and I talked to Dave, and we really need to do an RPF, RFP, sorry, um, an RFP if we want to stay under the 20. If we're going to go over that, then we need to look at a bit. So to move forward right now, if the board approves doing an RFP, we can get all of these companies to get on the same page and here's where we want to go and hopefully we'll find somebody for there there's a really nice one for 15 but that's what we're looking at it's a it's a revamp it's making it easier to put things on um, more interaction with the public um, Facebook YouTube Twitter, I don't know what other ones are out there. There'll be the ability to fill out forms on, online. There'll also be the ability to sign up so that you want the agenda for the town board meeting, the planning board, you don't care about zoning. You want um, what's going on at the park, you don't care about what's going on at town hall. You know, those kind of things. You can sign up for notification about certain things. We can do an online um, newsletter, and you can get the newsletter if you want it. Uh, links for the the Zoom meetings, all of that stuff would be online. Um, and one thing I do want to put out there to everybody is all of these are going to allow us to put pictures on. And one of the things these companies have stated is ask your residents to send you pictures. You're going to see different parts of the town that you don't even normally see and you can put different residents the pictures they send into a slideshow um, yeah there's, there's town, there are towns that do their uh, Christmas like Christmas like competition yeah. uh, you send in a picture of your home and then in, 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 in December we can have you know something like that set up uh, Ryan was talking earlier we were, we, we were kind of nervous about the prices and but Ryan you want to give us a little background on you know how things actually what, what looks like it's going to be very expensive may not be because of modules and add-ons and stuff like that. I mean, yeah, there's there's many different options, and I mean, basically it is it's an add-on option. So you're looking at somebody to develop a website for you. You work with them to identify what you're actually looking for, what your goals are, and they can usually custom build it for you. And with that, usually it's it's the same platform. So there's other things they can basically just slide in and rework for you, and you know, to the tune of hundreds or thousands of dollars. So I can I can easily see why there's such a, a big variance in the price. Yeah, one of the one of the gentlemen described it as kind of like a Lego thing. We can take a block here and, and put it in, or pick another block and put that in. It's not always a, a one size fits all type of thing. Yep. And we definitely need to do something. It's not easy to navigate. Um, we have di we have difficulty putting um, anything on the calendar. It's not a straightforward process. Everything that Brenda and I saw is, is much easier to yes. much much easier for yes. for the town to put information out and for our, for the residents to get that information back. Um, one of, one of the things is a calendar where you can see if the community center is running on a certain date without having to call up or if there's a softball league that runs the fields they, they play every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday you'll see on the calendar that the fields are booked. Uh, the pavilions for birthday parties or whatever. Mm -hmm. You'll see on a Saturday who has it from what time to what time. Um, all those things are uh, not very easily done at this point in time, if available at all. Um, we are, what do we think, what are we figuring us? Six years old, eight years old, the website? From think? looking at stuff, I think we thought it was only five or six. It looks like it was done in 2012. Yeah, so it's been it's been it's been eight or nine years and that's just yeah. way too long. Um, yeah. Technology. That's just yep. it. Technology has definitely changed. And some of this some of this will be able to be paid for with the uh, latest round of uh, ARPA funding, which is on on my notes to discuss with as we move down the page here. So So are we are we comfortable with us sending out an RFP? I'll make the motion. Thank you. 
Can I get a second? I'll second. Thank you, Ryan. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Brenda, can you call the board? Councilman Blaisdell. Yes. Councilwoman Kerr. Yes. Councilman Frolish. Yes. Councilman Isaacson. Yes. Supervisor Zalatnik. Yes. Uh, next up is a discussion on the town hall network. But before that, Jenny, do you want to take a couple of minutes and uh, explain where we are with what we're doing? I think that thing is working. Probably not. You can take the mask off. And I think you have to get really close to it. No, it's clip that. Oh, wait. Yeah, the volume is up. Try it again. Nope. Nope. No, I can't do that. <clears throat> now, the first two years. This always works at 4 o'clock on Wednesday afternoon. Good evening, board. Um, again, Jenny Littman from MJ Engineering. Uh, we wanted just to provide a quick update as to the status of the town hall improvement. Um, improvements currently underway. Um, the town hall roof replacement contract is obviously uh, in full swing. Um, currently, the roofing materials are 100% complete on all of the roofs, I'm told, and we're currently working on the soffits. Um, we will expect to see those be completed over the next couple of weeks. We did just finalize um, some submittal reviews for the soffit materials, but that's why you don't see the soffit work completed yet. But the roof system itself is complete and weather tight, which is great progress. Um, also, in the next few weeks, you'll start to see the site work um, begin, which has not been started at this moment in time. But you are on track to have the court space fully um, opened up to you as soon as you can get the interior renovations work completed to have that court space open back up by the end of May, which is what we had discussed previously. Um, but the contractor is otherwise on schedule to complete his work by the beginning of July, which is what his contract states. And that, that's including all the exterior work, obviously, which we said that they would have more time to complete. Um, so that's all great news. Um, in addition to that, obviously, the board just authorized a change order to install the interior ceiling finish work in just the court space. Uh, so that will then further your abilities to open up the court by the end of May. Um, so moving forward, obviously, we need to finish the interior work throughout the rest of the building, which really predominantly includes flooring, ceilings, some drywall repairs, and plumbing and heating improvements. So earlier today, I did send a list of all of the items that we think are required room by room, and that's something that I'd like to discuss with you in a little bit more detail in the next couple of days so that we can identify exactly what goes into the next contract, which we'll have to bob to bid. Um, the town did receive a quote from a local HVAC contractor, which did indicate that the costs are above the threshold to just, you know, solicit quotes. We will have to publicly bid that work, so that will get wrapped into the next contract. So we do anticipate the next contract will include multiple trades, so we'll have a C contract, an E, an H, and probably a P contract moving forward in this phase two round. Um, so MJ, again, we're ready to work with you to fine-tune that scope so that we can propose to you uh, the engineering fees that are required to get that done and so we can get that out to bid in the next month or so, or we'll get rolling on that in the next month or so so that we can be out to bid um, in the next couple of months and then get you back into the building before the end of the year, ideally, is what we'd like to do. So, any questions? Great. That was easy. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thank you. Okay, next up is a, uh, is a discussion on the town hall network. We met with, uh, we, had a, we had a discussion with Jeff from our IT firm and, and Bill Lewis. We are uh, woefully behind on that technical issue too. Um, we were thinking that now is the time to, uh, you know, get our wiring redone for the phones and the computers and so, um, we're going to sit down in the next week or so with Phil and, and Jeff and uh, come up with what they think is needed. And we can uh, talk about that hopefully at our next meeting. But um, that that also be covered under the ARPA funds uh, because infrastructure and technology are part of the things that you can use those funds for. So that shouldn't hurt us too much on our bid with the, the prices here. No, I just want to be looking at the whole new phone system because I know we 
yes. looked at that several times in the yep. past and never came yep. up with one. So okay. yeah, we're, we're gonna. That's one of the uh, one of the considerations as a new phone system. Just to keep you updated on where Bill and Jeff are working on that, and depending on how many phones we put in and where the system goes, uh, those prices are are very fluid at this time too. Okay, uh, moving on. I have a couple of uh, comments that I'd like to, uh, or some news I'd like to share with everybody here. Uh, both parks are now open. The uh, restrooms in both of the uh, areas are open. Uh, there have been some changes. We've had a, a, a bit of a problem with vandalism. So unfortunately, Anthony and the guys have had to take some measures to protect our doors and windows. Um, it's not going to be pretty, but can't keep having doors and windows smashed and uh, you know every other every other week here um, pavilion rentals we're going to start whenever people want to rent pavilions um, as long as they're following the, the CDC guidelines uh, those rentals will be available through the clerk's office uh -huh. Brenda has the forms um, we are going the, the town of Milton is going to be featured in a uh, magazine in June it's a business review magazine they have asked for, Brenda stated earlier, they have asked for pictures of the town. So I'm asking our residents to uh, send in pictures of the town, uh, places you like, um, places you think that are of interest in the town. And uh, they will pick about 10 photographs to put in this article. And um, you can send them to either the town clerk or myself. And, um, and the board can take a look at them and, and we'll be the judges of which uh, which pictures are going to go uh, in there. Uh, speaking of the ARPA funds, I'm going to ask residents who are interested to, uh, I, I'd like to form a committee with about five or six people on it to help us decide or come up with some uh, ideas uh, on where these funds can and should be spent. Like we said before, the town is going to get $2.1 million over the next two years. Uh, 20, roughly 22, 23% of that goes to the village. So we're still looking at about $1.65 million over the next two years. Um, also, I'd like to give a shout out to the highway department. Uh, over the winter, they had a couple of spots where the plows uh, dug up some residents' lawns. And the guys were out this week uh, re replacing the grass, putting down some seed and uh, some topsoil, fixing up the lawns for, for the residents there. Does anybody have anything else? I just have a... Uh, I have one or two questions. Where are we, do you stand with uh, Heritage Springs right here? Dave is finishing up his, his review. And as soon as he gets it done, John, we'll, we'll, I'll pass it out to you guys, and we'll we'll set something up. With the Heritage Springs. Oh, okay. I know. I do we anticipate that will be done within the month? Or? I, I'm I'm expecting it to be done by the end of the month. Yes. So, you want any new business here? Comments? Sure. Go ahead. Okay. Um, Two weeks ago, Attorney Craig sent the board copies of Councilman Isaacson and my recommendation for changes in the, in the town junkyard ordinances. I want to thank John, you did respond. Um, the problem is the majority of your responses were, this is what we can't do. And I'd really, really like some constructive comments on what we can do. Okay, and, and how do you feel about some of those changes? I know you did did send those out, some positive recommendations, and not only from you, but from the whole board. Um, at this point, uh, we seem to be at a stalemate, and I, I don't want to drag this on any longer. I'd like to come to some consensus. Um, I'd like a reasonable compromise between the board, the residents, and the owners, because we don't want to hurt anybody here. Okay. If we can't, um, it would be my recommendation to abandon our ordinances and start looking at adopting um, 
the uh, New York State controls on junkyards. And I think, does everyone have a copy? If you don't, I'll happily send you one. But I think that'll be the next step. I'd like to see the compromise right here in town. If that doesn't happen, I think we have to move on and look at the New York State regulations. Just as a quick note, Barb, um, I was just responding to the literature that you sent out. Mm -hmm. Have you even met with the owners of the junkyard yet? We haven't met with anyone yet. Well, I know I, that's why you guys met that, with no, the that's why neighbors. I, no, that's why. No, we haven't, really. No, we haven't. Earlier in the year. I, I, did, I met with some, yeah. some neighbors. Okay, to, to well, you, there hasn't been any kind of formal, what, since we've come up with these compromises. Microphone. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Still Frank. Since we came up with these recommendations, we haven't met with anyone. That's why I wanted to go by the board first. I wanted your input. I wanted, and I want positive input. What what can we do to try to settle this? Um, like I said, we want to be fair to everyone. I, I, and like I said to Mr. Dawson a couple weeks ago, we have every intention of meeting with both sides and running running these recommendations by him and the other owners. We're not going to try to push anything through. But I wanted board input. Well, I guess I don't, my comments may have been negative, but when I looked at the whole situation, and you, if you read my comments, uh, it really left it up to the board to be subjective. And I don't think that's a good thing. And that's the reason I wrote that. Uh, basically, as it's written right now, you will probably put out Metro Metals out of business. I don't think that was our intent. I don't know how you can come to a compromise if you don't bring all the parties to the table. Well, we will. We will. But I wanted some positive input on it. Do you have any other ideas? Do you have a better Barb, idea? Barb, steal Frank's oh, microphone. I have taken my own. Just steal Frank. You know, I want some positive input. Brian and I both want some positive input. And, and what do you think would work better or whatever? And like I said, it, I, Take it out of our hands and go with the New York State regulations. I think some we should start reviewing those to see, see what they offer. That's it. Okay. Uh, before we go into public comment, I, our, our last public comment, I have one more uh, thing to say. As a town supervisor, I am afforded uh, the ability to make two appointments. They are my appointments and mine alone. They are the confidential secretary and the deputy supervisor. Um, over the last week or two, we've had this, I've had discussions with Councilwoman Kerr. And she has uh, expressed her intention to run for the position of town supervisor. And so at this time, I, am, uh, I have asked Councilwoman Kerr to resign from that position. She has declined. So at this time, I will be removing Councilwoman Kerr as a deputy supervisor from the town of Milton, and I will be placing her with Ellie Dillon. Um, I'll now open the floor for public comment. Well, I have a comment to make. Um, Supervisor Zlotnick, I feel like one. I have. I feel I have gone above and beyond my position as deputy supervisor in the last year and a half. I have supported you and done my best in that position to represent and serve the residents of this town. I've always given you my best advice and the best representation in your actions. As deputy supervisor, I'm your appointment and serve at your pleasure, and I have no choice but to respect your decision, although I do not believe my removal is being done for a good reason and for a good, as a good for our town. So, you, and my next question was, why are you doing it? Um, but I understand why you're doing it, and I also understand you're looking for the Democratic endorsement. So, thank you. Public comment? Anybody? Any hands raised? 
I see some hands raised, so we'll start with um, Mr. Dawson. Hang on just a second, sir. Okay, go ahead, sir. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Tony Dawson, I'm Mr. Recycling, 274 Green Hill Down. Yeah. <coughs> and uh, Kerr's uh, comments and approach um, very concerning. I don't know how a uh, town board can uh, decide or even discuss what changes would be made <coughs> and what would affect a scrapyard uh, or the investment that is required in a scrapyard. Uh, moving on, there's a huge disconnect between what Councilmember Isaacson reported on record at the March 24th meeting and then what Town Attorney Craig outlined in his March 31st correspondence to me and then to my attorney during a phone conversation. The zoning changes uh, versus changes to Chapter 103 are very different, as is abandonment of the current law. Councilwoman is incorrect in her assumption that there is a New York State regulation on junk yards. My objections are are of record and well documented to the members of this board, including the element to my company being found in full compliance with all applicable laws, your board's property owners being in violation of local laws, and these restriction, restrictions, and town attorney Craig having a serious conflict of interest. Members of the board ignoring the local laws and restrictions or at least not comply papers, which local laws and deed restrictions were intended to mitigate the exact issues that were being complained about today by revisiting the Joe Guard license of law and accommodation is simply wrong and contrary to law, and I object. I'm not going to waste any more of my time defending my position as it has fallen on deaf ears. Luckily, for my benefit, the record is abundantly clear. If this board does not have a moral compass, and if this board cannot differentiate right from wrong, legal from illegal, and decides to take any improper action that will negatively impact my business in any way, unfortunately I cannot stop it at this time. However, I assure you, I will take whatever steps necessary to right any wrong, and do whatever damage is inflicted upon me or my business, by seconds, board, sir. and I will stop at nothing to protect my employees, my company, and my investment. Any improper action by this board would be a terrible disservice to roughly 30,000 voters, taxpayers, of the town of Milton have elected you to do a job and represent as a whole, and will cost them hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, for the benefit of a few non-compliant property owners that didn't bother to pay attention to the surroundings, deed restrictions, or local laws. Thank you.
Need a motion to come out of executive session? I'll make the motion. Second. Thank you, Frank. Uh, no action was taken in executive session. Um, oh, yeah, need to pull the board. I'm sorry. Councilman Blaisdell. Yes. Councilwoman Kerr. Yes. Councilman Frohmish. Yes. Councilman Isaacson. Yes. Supervisor Zalak. Yes. Uh, seeing nothing further, need a. <laughs> Like a motion to uh, adjourn, please. I'll make that motion. Thank you. Can I get a second? Second. Thank you, Ryan. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everyone. Good night. May your God bless you.